If I have to give one piece of advice to anyone who wants to modify the 3D printer, you need at least one functional, reliable 3D printer. And the idea was that this Sermon D1, which was given to me by Creality, would have been just that printer. I'm going to show you in this video how we can do some modifications from scratch. And if you are wondering why you should listen to my advice, I am Chief Modification Master. Okay, this is a nice printer, besides some of the weird design choices. Let's call it like that. I cannot touch the screen with this thing closed. Um, this enclosure implies that it should keep some warmth inside, or maybe some kittens outside. I do not have kittens, so the only reason for an enclosure like this for me would be to keep the warmth inside. But once it's somehow warm in here, maybe due to the power supply and the main board here at the bottom. I open this thing to control it and all warmth will go to the outside, so... This is a full metal hot end, so this implies that you can reach higher temperatures, but the maximum temperature is 260 degrees. This extruder is very good at under extruding. I'm not a fan at all of this direct drive extruder. I had to reduce the print speed even below what I normally do with an Ender 3. So for now, the only thing that I can print on this thing is PLA at a slow speed. As it is now, now I would just buy an Ender 3, but I like this machine. And I think with some minor improvements, we can already get some interesting results. I will just change the biggest problem of this machine, in my opinion, and that's this direct drive extruder. I want to modify this so I can add a standard direct drive extruder. I'm going to add a micro Swiss direct drive hot end to it. I'm going to show you how you can modify this. But first I have to take this thing apart. I had a bunch of upgrades in mind for this printer. Among them the 750 watt silicon bed heater. Not a main board. An enclosure heater, Raspberry Pi, touchscreen, solid state relays. I think I will use this for another printer. I also have this Micro Swiss direct drive hot end. I've used this on my N3 V2, but I modified that N3 for the modification masks contest. So it has a dual hot end right now. So this thing is left. And I think it would be interesting to add this to the Sermon B1. So these upgrades or for a later video. I'm going to need a 2020 profile in order to add this. So and this is basically pretty straightforward. I'm going to upgrade this thing and modify these blocks at the opposite ends and add this 2020 profile here instead of these two rods. So I can just add a direct drive extruder to the sprinter. So I'm going to take this thing further apart I've made this design, which I'm quite pleased with, and this is my first iteration. I accidentally made a mirror image. I screwed up! 
again. This is not my first iteration. I'm going to show you quickly what I've done. I started out pretty simple with this shape. Because this original gantry is symmetric, I've made a sketch left from the origin. So I can use the origin as a um, mirror plane. Before I start with the design, I always ask myself, is there anything symmetric? And are there any important measurements? In hindsight, I should better have just dimensioned the center distance. There was one interesting part, is that the bearing, which is placed in here, is held in place with two set screws. And because I'm using inserts, uh, I had a problem, because the amount of material here is less than the length of that insert. I had to come up with a clever solution, so I used a reference plane at an angle of 45 degrees, because I have more than enough material here. I added a sketch on there, and place those holes for those inserts. And I also added a ridge, so I don't press the insert all the way through. One piece of advice, if you're going to reverse engineer, if you can download parts, just download them. I often use GrabCAD for downloading things like profiles or um, this hot end holder. If you're going to do this, then take some measurements and check if the dimensions are correct. And I've placed the nozzle position this over here at the same position as the original nozzle and I added a chamfer here at the inside to make it better printable my idea is to print it in this orientation so if I have an overhang like that I always check if I can add the chamfer to that so I don't need support I had the idea to print it into this orientation so I had to add a 45 de degree angle here but it turns out I'm not going to use it I'm not going to print it into this direction but I thought it looked pretty neat so I just kept it like that I added this 45 degree angle and added two fillets and um, this is a cool effect if you go a little further I added two holes here for the timing belt. All these features like these holes, these holes for the timing belt, these holes here to keep this 2020 profile in place. They are all mirrored, so I have got this mirror function here. So I have the mirrored part and from this point onward we have some specific features. The motor mount, um, I just placed on here. It's a bit close to the edge, but it's printable and on the other side um, the hole for the pulley. So that's basically the design. As we speak, I am printing this out of ABS on my giant printer. Once the print is finished, I'm going to put everything together and make a sick looking Piro montage sequence and get everything together <coughs> to make it fucking awesome. Yeah. Here's the coffee. After three iterations, the first which was a mirrored image and the second of which these timing belts didn't line out at all. And um, the only problem I'm having now is that this standard fan duct, it um, collides with this rod over here. So I have to redesign that fan duct. That's not that big of an issue because these fans are different. So I think it's better to make a custom fan duct on which these fans can be placed so you don't have to solder anything if you're going to replicate this mod. The Ender 3 has a 40 by 40 millimeter fan and the Sir Moon has two 30 by 30 millimeter fans and one radial fan. I'm going to ditch that radial fan because it makes a lot of noise and I won't be needing it in this design. I have one cold end fan here which is cooling down this block and this will be the hot end fan. I've designed a duct for it so it blows air on this nozzle. The most tricky part of this design is that fan duct 
Um, by the way, I'm using special inserts here at the front. These are very thin inserts, specially made for these thin walls. The most tricky part of this was the loft. And a loft is basically a... I can show it quickly. If I'm going to place a rectangle on this plane here, and I will make another rectangle on this plane, for instance, well, here. I've got two sketches, and now I can create a loft between them. So I select this shape and that one. So you can make fancy shapes, but it's it's quite simple. And what I've done is one sketch here with the fan duct and another one here where it, the duct starts. And this is the shape which remains. Uh, this wall here was becoming very thin. So I've extruded that a bit and added a very large fillet. Another thing I saw was this screw over here. It was gliding in here. This is not the case on the hot end that I'm using because the Microsphere's hot end has an offset of 10 millimeters. I want this compatible with the standard Ender 3 hot end as well. So I've made a hole in here in which the screws fit. I've added holes here for the zip tie. Uh, this is the bracket which fits the standard carrier and I use slotted holes so I can adjust the height of this fan duct and the height of this fan doesn't matter that much. And I've added a micro switch here and a micro switch is colliding in here so this is the homing switch i already printed this fan duct but i ran into a funny issue which i've already solved in this drawing and that's this homing switch it homes in the y direction it homes in the x direction but once the x position is homed and the y position will home it will collide with this pulley over here mm, maybe it will home on there but so I'm going to redesign it so this moves a bit further to the back or to the right. And the other issue I have is that this fan duct is very close to this hot end. So it's less than a millimeter. Chances are that this will melt. And I think I will print this fan duct on this machine itself. So maybe this will melt, but we'll see. And I'm going to print it with this 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The other printer has a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, so this is a lot more coarse. I'm going to check if this printer is already capable of printing ABS. Okay, I'm going to start the print and let's see how well this fan duct will hold up. Hopefully it will be able to print ABS without the top on there. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's it's extruding in the wrong direction. Ah, okay. Stop the print. Where have I seen this before? Okay, I've swapped all the four wires. Let's see if that if it extrudes in the right direction now. I just realized I have these boxes from 3D for makers, in which they send these large spools for printing those rims. And it looks like this is the perfect size uses a lid on top of the printer so I'm able to print ABS on that hopefully this will keep the warmth uh, inside talking about ABS this is a five kilo spool of ABS if you need a perfect size box for your Sermon D1 uh, for printing ABS and you need ABS as well then you can visit 3 makerscom because they also have these large spools you can send a special request and if you use the proper printing promo code you can get 10% off of all your purchases on there. I will keep my hand to the power switch. So if it makes weird noises due to this not being connected well, I can turn it off. Yes, all right. Of course it's connected correctly. And there we have it. It's printing a brim. I'm going to put a box on top of here and let this finish printing. The printer has got a hat now.
Okay, I think that this is a success with the stock hot hand. I tried to print ABS, but it came out like a sponge. And now I've printed these hot shoe holders. The fan duct works as well because this first version I printed without the fan enabled and it didn't turn out that well. And once I enabled the fan, it, it's just perfect. It's perfectly printed ABS without warping, without any under extrusion. It looks great. I use these things for my small aperture light. And uh, normally you place this light on top of your camera on the hot shoe. But I like to put it somewhere where I just need the light. So I can just place it wherever I want, turn it on and then I have a dedicated light source. You can also use this for different things. For example, this microphone. And um, <laughs> this printer is now capable of printing TPU. So I've printed this out of flexible material. I don't have much experience with these materials, but I, am, uh, I must say that I really like it. And the reason behind this, I think that this would dampen some contact noise and it stays in place. And it looks cool. So this printer is capable of printing TPU and ABS while everything up to 260 degrees. Maybe I'm going to add a different mainboard in the future when I want to go uh, to higher temperature materials like polycarbonate. But for now, this will be my daily driver for just the standard stuff. If you have the ceremony one and you have extrusion issues or you want to add a different extruder, then I definitely recommend this mod. Another advantage of using this 2020 profile is that I can add, for instance, the rocker system that I've won the contest with. Maybe I'm going to do that, maybe not, but the option is there. All files can be downloaded from my website for free. Just check properprinting.pro. You can also find the files of these small hot shoe holders. If you are a filmmaker or YouTuber, then this will come in handy. You can just throw a bunch of these in your backpack. It's a 45 minute print. For this video, this was it. I hope you have enjoyed watching. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. And I wish you a great day and see you in the next video. Bye.